Hi Emma, thanks very much for joining us today. Um, really excited to talk to you about all, all the things you're currently doing in the pro game and um, catch up on, um, look back on you know, what your League One BC experience was like um, in, in its inaugural season. So um, yeah, thanks again and let's get stuck in with Pal's life in Denmark at the moment. Uh, really good. Yeah, just um, kind of in the middle of our season right now, we're pushing for uh, gold again. Uh, it's looking a little bit tougher this year than in the past, but yeah, it's been a really good season so far and starting to get uh, a little warmer here, which is nice uh, and not dark at 4 p.m. So yeah, I can't complain. So in your first season with um, Hobika, you uh, won the won the title, um, which is a really good start for, for, for you in your um, career in the professional game. So talk us through that experience and your kind of first few months um, in, in the professional environment and in a new country as well. Yeah, so I actually came in uh, in the middle of the season in Denmark. They have a break in, in December, January. So that was when I joined. And so they were already seven points up in the league, so I really can't take credit for the gold there. But uh, yeah, it was a very um, new experience. I had obviously lived away and played away from home in college. I played in, in Texas, so that was far from home, but this was very far from home. Um, and then obviously you add in all the culture differences and the language difference. And so all of that was a lot to manage, but there's um, a really good group of internationals on this team. So there was about 10 of us um, spoke English and we all sort of live in a, a similar area uh, close to the stadium. So that was really helpful in my transition just socially to be able to come into a team where people were very welcoming and aware of the, the differences between North America and Europe. So that was great. And then, yeah, as you said, we won gold. Uh, definitely wasn't without challenges throughout the season. I think we had our ups and downs and um, ultimately we were able to come out on top and there's really good competition here. Some really good top, the top four teams are very uh, competitive day in, day out. And even, even outside of the top four, there's always upsets. And so it kind of came right down to the last game, but um, yeah, we pulled it out and got the gold. So that was a very nice first uh, season for me. Brilliant stuff. And your your week in, week out type of routine, how are you kind of getting used to it and, and getting settled? Yeah, I mean, kind of, uh, honestly, more time than I had before because I was in college with school and soccer. So to just have just soccer to focus on and that be my job and top priority in my life was actually a really nice transition. So um, yeah, training in the morning, meetings, gym, recovery, do what you need to do. And then uh, we kind of have the afternoon and evening off. And so, yeah, being able to be with some international players and even some of the Danish girls that live nearby um, socially is really, really nice. But um, yeah, day in, day out, I'm finding myself needing to kind of pick up some hobbies or go to the sauna, which is very uh, Scandinavian. But um, yeah, stuff like that, because it's it's very nice in the professional environment. This is your only focus. And I've never really had that before being in school and, you know, at home, there's a lot of other distractions. So I was really able to make soccer my number one. Going back to when you first signed, how did that opportunity come about? Um, yeah, so I actually had... Um, an old national team coach who was Danish and he knew the coach of my team here at the time. Uh, he since retired, but so that was kind of a weird connection that I never saw really like bring anything to fruition in the future. I never thought of that as, as an option, but that connection kind of opened the door um, to me speaking to this team and seemed like a really good fit top of the Danish league. And I really wasn't too picky about where I was going to go and ended up being Denmark is an amazing country. Copenhagen is beautiful, highly recommended for traveling. Um, and, and yeah, just kind of fit it into the team culture and, and how they do things here. And it doesn't hurt to, you know, be top of the league and winning games. That's always nice. So yeah, just kind of, uh, 
happened, um, kind of came out of nowhere. And I was very kind of stressed about how things were going to work and, you know, getting an agent or going in the draft and all of that stuff coming out of college. But yeah, everything worked out in the end and it turned out to be a really good fit. Great. Um, obviously, you had a really good college career before going pro and you also played in League One BC. So was, was there, um, did League One BC's platform help you in any way to perhaps get this um, opportunity to go pro? Yeah, I just think it's a great opportunity to continue doing something in the summer. That's when I, I played there was being back home from college. You have like almost two months in the summer of time off. And I think it's it's nice to have a break and a reset, but you also want to be training and playing competitively if you can. So, you know, the times that I was able to do that while I was back home in Vancouver was super beneficial. And um, it was a lot of girls that I had grown up with playing, some coaches that I had grown up with. So that fit was really nice and convenient to just have that right, you know, in my backyard in Vancouver. Great. And obviously that result, that season resulted in um, a regular season title as well. Was there takeaways from that season that, that, that kind of helped you fit into the competitive culture of, um, of your new club in Denmark? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, in my college career, I played a bunch of different positions. I was a little bit more defensive towards the beginning of my career and playing center back and, and fullback and you know, at the time that was kind of where the national team had put me. And so that was that, and I couldn't really do anything about it, but towards the end of college, I was able to move into the midfield. And that was really like my dream. That's where I always, I started playing when I was younger and that's where I kind of get the most joy. So being back in league one, that was where I got to play. And I felt like I got a lot more opportunity and just minutes and time on the ball and good training in there. So and that's where I, I play today. And so I really credit that time in the summer to kind of set me up for not only my college career playing there, but, you know, even now it's just, it's about getting time and learning in, that, in a new position. So yeah, that, that season was really great for me to do that and explore kind of going forward and being a little bit more dangerous and aggressive and not, you know, having that kind of like stay at home center back mindset. Brilliant. And you're um, not the only League One alumni to have played in um, for, for the club. Um, I know Samantha Chang played in League One Ontario as well. Have your paths crossed and has it been nice to kind of chat to her about things back home? Yeah, so nice. Um, like I said, we've got lots of internationals, so there were some Americans and stuff before, but it's not really the same. Canadians are, you know, their own group and the Europeans love to categorize us all together but I think we kind of take a bit of offense to that so yeah having Sam here has been great uh, I played with her a lot growing up uh, through youth national teams and so I knew her pretty well um, knew the type of player she was she's an amazing player and to have her addition to the team not only you know selfish reasons as a, as a friend was a really really great fit so yeah I think we're both very happy here awesome fantastic and it, and it wasn't um well, you were back home for what recently, um, what with um, Canada Women's National Team and She Believes Cup. Um, um, talk us through what it was like to rejoin that setup after, um, obviously you were there in October as well, but there was that gap. So talk us through uh, what it's been like to recently come back into that fold and, and, and the recent camps. Yeah, um, after the October camp, I think, I felt good. I was kind of given an opportunity to actually play in that camp against Brazil. So um, yeah, I felt really good and had had good experience being back in the national team. And then um, right before the next camp in Vancouver, I uh, injured my ankle. So that was kind of heartbreaking. I kind of had the opportunity to be back in front of a home crowd, like not necessarily play, but just be at BC Place and, and all of that. So that was kind of heartbreaking that I wasn't able to do that and have, you know, see my family and friends and all of that. So I've kind of been on the road to recovery. I was in uh, a booth for six weeks over Christmas at home. So that was a nice little visit. And then, um, yeah, since being back here uh, in the new year, I've just been rehabbing and getting back into training and playing. And I think 
this camp was the first that I had really had some games under my belt and felt good about being back in. And unfortunately, uh, one of the other members of the team picked up an injury right before camp. So I was kind of called in last minute, which, you know, you never want to see happen. And, and, but that was oh, an opportunity for me. So um, it was really good to be back and I hope I get the opportunity in the future, but honestly, anything can happen and it's very kind of all up in the air. So I'm just, yeah, when I'm able to be in, it's great. Um, otherwise, you know, just here in Denmark playing. And you're in the squad in 2018 and that's obviously a lot has happened since then um, for mm -hmm. you personally. So talk us through how, how different do you feel now compared to that time and, and, and feel more mature, more equipped? What, what are those differences? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was still in college in 2018. That was my freshman year. And so that balance between, you know, school and the NCAA doesn't really have international windows. So when you leave for camp, you're missing games, you're missing class and all of that is just it's not really a, as conducive of an environment as a professional team is. So I think that alone is, is really nice. Like I said before, my only focus right now is soccer and that allows me to, you know, leave when I have camp and I'm not missing anything back here and I can just jump right in. Um, and yeah, I think I was younger, obviously different position. Um, I think I'm a very different player now, very different, uh, mindset necessarily but just confidence I think I've just played the game for a couple more years now I I know what works I know that I'm a professional now and I've I've made it and regardless of how I play I I have a little bit more kind of confidence behind me that you know everyone's going to make mistakes there it's a high pressure environment very intense very good players and you know just to be called in is great and to be competing with some of the best players in Canada so yeah, I think definitely different mindset and different player today. And hopefully that that shows and I'm I'm able to be involved more going going forward. Fantastic. Um, going right back to the start of when you first started getting involved in the sport. Am I right in saying it was with Burnaby? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they're now going to be in League One BC as well, starting their adult programs up with in Pro-Am Soccer. Um, how exciting is that news for you, considering that you've got, you know, quite a good emotional ties back home with, with the club? Yeah, I think it's really cool. I think any time that teams are added and there's more kind of investment and opportunity, you know, it just opens up another whole team of roster spots that, you know, girls in Vancouver can be, can be competing for. So, yeah, I think it's great. I think, I still live in Burnaby, so it's very cool that that my city is going to be represented now. Um, yeah, I think it's just it's just great the growth of the sport, and any time that something like that happens, it's positive for women's soccer in general. Brilliant. And you mentioned about the platforms earlier on, but um, from your experience, what does that opportunity um, in League One BC provide people? Yeah, I think for for local players that are that are there uh, year round, it's a great opportunity to play at home and, you know, with the players that they are playing with or competing with year round. And for girls like me that were coming back from college or whatever environment that they're in abroad, it's just a great competitive local league that that they can get some great training and some great minutes in over the summer. I think there's lots of girls um, that I know even that are still in school and are going to be back for the holidays uh, over the summer. And it's just, it's a great opportunity for them to get better. And I think it gives them an advantage. There's definitely girls on their teams or in their conferences that are just going home and probably doing nothing for two months, but you know, league one BC allows them to be fit, get game time, get experience and, and really come back into their seasons at a, at a higher point and, and be stronger for it. Fantastic. And I know you've touched on it a little bit briefly, but what are your aspirations now moving forward from, from this point? You've just got back from She Believes Cup camp and, um, and, and you know, doors, doors, the door might be ajar there again, there again. So talk us through your, your aspirations, um, perhaps club and country and perhaps anything else that you're looking to do. 
Yeah, I think definitely to be selected again would be be amazing. And I know, you know, going forward this year, there's the Olympics. Um, I feel like that's probably an outside shot for me and, you know, anything could happen. So I'm definitely going to be putting in the work to, to aim for something like that. But there's so many tournaments after. So I think just getting back in the squad, being able to be in that environment as much as possible is definitely a goal. And then um, for club, win the league, we've won it the last three years and there's absolutely no way that we can let that slip away this year. So that's definitely a, a big goal. We've got some some work to do on that front. That's uh, some pressure to live up to, isn't it? But but I'm sure you're, you're more than capable. Yeah, thank you. It's just... It's just great that uh, even a league like Denmark, which I feel like is a bit less lesser known, maybe a lot of people think of Sweden first when they think of Scandinavia, which um, amazing league as well. But it's great. I think even over the last couple of years, there's been more investment here and more competitive teams. And, you know, before we started our little run of, of wins, there were the same two teams that swapped back and forth for pretty much since the beginning of the league. So yeah, I think it's it's just great that there's leagues like this all over the world that we can play in that are competitive and uh, really give people the opportunity to get better and then get in their national teams and, and move on from there. Great. And uh, finally from me, really, is there anything else that you'd like to add while you've got the opportunity? No, I don't think so. Just thank you for, for reaching out. I'm really excited for League One to get started back up. And um, yeah, honoured to be the first interview. Thank you.